get started with Pete Buttigieg. Now, this came out, and I don't know how everyone feels about this. I really do not like Pete Buttigieg. I think he reminds me of a white Obama. I've said that before. I'm standing by it. But I think we need to know about what is happening here. So this was from The Hill. Buttigieg edges out Biden among Democrats in New Hampshire poll. Yikes. Now, before we get into the article here and the stats, I do want to remind everybody, if you go back to the 2020 election, Joe Biden didn't do well in New Hampshire. Even back then, he didn't do well in New Hampshire. So that's something I just, I want you to keep in mind. All right, so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, it is happening. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg received slightly more support compared to President Biden among likely 2024 New Hampshire Democratic primary voters when asked their first choice for president. Now that's according to a new poll that was released on Tuesday. The University of New Hampshire Sec uh, Survey Center Granite Poll found that 17% of likely 24 primary voters in the state would choose Buttigieg among a list of Democrats or those who caucus with Democrats who are considered possible for 2024. Now you notice they had to put this part here where it says those who caucus with Democrats because Bernie Sanders is an independent, but he caucuses with Democrats. So they had to add that piece in. So 17% guys are more likely to choose him than Joe Biden. Now, there is something I wanna say here really quickly and then we'll get back into the article. I wanna remind you, this is a New Hampshire poll. They polled people in New Hampshire. And I also wanna tell you this, although it is my neighboring state, New Hampshire is not representative of the rest of the United States. It really isn't. It is a different kind of place. I've been there multiple times. When you look at the demographics in New Hampshire, it's not representative of the United States. Very few black people, very few people of color. So just keep that in mind. That's why someone like Pete may poll better in New Hampshire, but not so well in a state like South Carolina. So please just keep that in mind. It is not representative of the rest of this country. I'll go ahead and add that about Iowa as well because they say that about Iowa. They're like, oh, the Iowa caucus, oh, this is so important. We really need to pay attention to what happens in Iowa. And I'm like, okay, great. But again, Iowa also is not representative of the majority of Americans in the United States. That is not what the other states or a lot of the states in this country look like. So the fact that they go to these two states first, I've always considered that to be suspect. Why did they go to two states that have very few people of color. And they let those two states determine who is actually gonna most likely win this race. Although that didn't happen in 2020, but Obama came in and he you know, did what he had to do to make sure that Joe would fare well, cause Joe was not doing well. And Joe's not doing well right now. And that's why someone like Pete is ahead of him in this poll. Now let's go on. Biden received 16% support, followed by Warren and Gavin Newsom, who came in at 10%. A handful of other Democrats, in addition, Bernie Sanders, received less than 10%. What you also have to understand about New Hampshire, some of the policies, some of the things I think that Bernie Sanders was fighting for that were on his platform, one thing to kind of keep in mind, I think it was really a lot of the college students that really helped Bernie Sanders in New Hampshire and the fact that he's from Vermont and Vermont and New Hampshire are neighboring states. So they tend to go hand in hand with this type of situation. But I do want you to realize something else. New Hampshire has a motto called live free or die. I kid you not. You drive to the state, state sign says live free or die. Florida is the sunshine state, you know? 
Some states have logos like that. New Hampshire says you live free or die. (laughs) So they don't have as many rules as some of the other states. I I just want to tell you that like there's things you can kind of get away with in New Hampshire that you probably can't get away with here with here in Massachusetts, to be honest, or Connecticut or New York. Like they're a little bit more chill. Uh, It's more rural, although there are cities you have uh, Portsmouth. Um, you have, oh, I think that's something. Portsmouth, like a coastal town or whatever. Kind of reminds me of Portland, Maine. But, you know, depending on where you are in New Hampshire can can kind of like depict where people are politically. Typically, people on the coastal, like those coastal towns like Portsmouth tend to be more blue. But you also have red pockets in New Hampshire as well as you get further out into the rural areas. Uh, But it used to be a swing state. It has been a blue state for the past couple of years. Um, But just keep that in mind, what you're dealing with when you look at a state like New Hampshire. So I don't want you to see these numbers and think that's how it is for the rest of the country. That's not how it is. The margin of error for among the Democrats polled specifically is plus or minus 4.7 points, meaning that Buttigieg and Biden are statistically tied among voters. But the polling further demonstrates that Democrats are not wedded to the idea of choosing Biden, Biden, <laughs> Biden as their nominee in the next presidential cycle. The White House has said Biden intends to run in 2024, though Buttigieg has not made any announcements on the matter. When respondents were asked about their second choice for 24, presidential candidate Cory Booker received the most support at 14 percent, followed by Buttigieg at 13 percent. I saw Cory Booker in New Hampshire, for those who don't know. I saw Cory Booker in Portsmouth, uh, New Hampshire. It was funny, too, because uh, the gentleman that he called on on the crowd in the crowd said, yeah, you sound a lot like Barack Obama. He talked a good game, had a similar educational background to you, but then he got there and he didn't do anything. That was funny. <laughs> In comparison, only 2% of respondents chose Biden as their second choice. The poll found that compared to data collected in June, fewer Democrats want the president to seek another turn in 24. While 40, uh, 54% of Democrats said in June they wanted Biden to make another bid, that figure dropped to 31% in the latest poll. That's a big drop there, going from 54% to 31%. And I'm willing to bet that has a lot to do with the current stage of the economy. President Biden is increasingly seen as electoral liability for the Democrats, both in uh, 2022 midterms and in 24 presidential election. Now, that's coming from the Survey Center Director Andrew Smith. The UNH Survey Center granite poll was conducted between July 21st and July 25th with 1,043 people surveyed. The margin of error among all respondents was plus or minus three percentage points. Among 430 likely 24 Democratic primary voters surveyed, specifically the margin of error was plus or minus 4.7 points. And they have tags here that you can see as well. Now, I personally do not want Pete Buttigieg. I don't want any of those people mentioned in that list. I don't want any of them. I feel like we've been down this road before, but there are some troubling things about Pete that bothered me when he ran in 2020 as well. Pete, when he was mayor, Pete, In Indiana, good old Indiana, Uh, Pete had some racial issues in his uh, city in South Bend. There was an issue that happened between the police department. I'm not sure if everyone is aware of this. I feel like mainstream media didn't cover this much, but I knew about it. 
So it turns out that the police department in South Bend, some of the white police officers uh, were racist. And one of the, the, the black police officer there decided to report it. The things that he heard, the things that were said about black people from these white cops. Do you know what Mayor Pete did? Instead of punishing the white police officers who were racist, he decided to punish the black police officer who reported it. So that gentleman was removed. That's Mayor Pete. There's more. There was a kid, a black boy, who was found hanging from a tree. Again, this is his town in South Bend, Indiana. Pete Buttigieg told the family that they would do everything they could to find out what happened, who did this, get the person who did it. Never happened. So the family put him on blast on YouTube, on Facebook, other social media applications, and said, how is he going to run for president and he can't even handle the situations that we have in small South Bend, Indiana? And that made me look at Pete sideways. And then I remember when Pete first started running, he said he was for Medicare for all. Then when the debate started, he changed his mind. All of a sudden, he said that was too radical. Kamala Harris did that same thing. Those incidents right there let me know two things. Number one, Pete was fake. And number two, Pete was really not trying to care about black people, period. He may not say those words. They may not come directly out of his mouth, but his actions speak louder than words. So Sabby, not a fan of Pete. Now, Pete's ex-advisor had some things to say here about the Democratic Party, about what she thinks the Democratic Party needs to do. And I want you to pay very close attention to what she said here. Now, shout out to Case Study QB, always doing the thing. Case Study QB here says, this is how you get more mansions and cinemas. Now, I want you to remember, this was Pete Buttigieg, ex-advisor. So listen to what she says here, because this will let you know some things about Pete as well. She advised him for his 2020 campaign. Listen to this. For the Democratic Party to be a majority party, we cannot be a party of political purity. Um, and we cannot have a checklist and expect Democrats in every single state to look like um, a Democrat from the most liberal district in New York. Uh, in the presidential primary, we saw this sort of rush to the left. And a Democrat in West Virginia is going to look very different from a Democrat in New York and California and Ohio. And to w to get more Democratic senators, um, we're, we're going to need to win states like Pennsylvania. We're going to need to win states like uh, Wisconsin. We're going to need to win states like Ohio. And to win those states, we're going to have to understand that the Democratic candidates are going to be candidates who reflect the values of people in their state and not every ideological special interest group in Washington. And yet in the time that we've been in Washington, I don't know if there's been anything more endangered. Well, perhaps, you know, moderate Republicans than say blue dog democrats right you know especially on this issue of abortion which democrats want to use to motivate their base to paint republicans as extremists is there room for anti-abortion democrats in the tent well um we still have you, you know i think now there's not a single pro-choice uh republican congress there are two in the senate um, in terms of Democrats, uh, it's it's getting smaller and smaller. But I do think that we need to have an, a big tent and be a big tent party and understand that people, I, uh, the abortion issue is a tough one and that people have complex views on this issue. Most people are not um, in the 10% that says abortion should be illegal in all cases. Most people are not in the 10% that say we need to shout our abortions. And we need to um, give room and space for Democrats to have a range of uh, views on this issue. Oh my. So Pete's ex advisor just told you that the democratic party needs to have a big tent. You know what that means? 
That means anybody who wants to be a part of this party can join. You don't necessarily have to agree with us on the policies per se. You don't really have to be pro-abortion. You don't really have to be, you know, or supposed to be pro-working class. You don't really have to be like pro-working class or fighting for the people. You don't really have to agree with us on these social issues either, which we usually run on. We just want to be have a big tent. Anybody, anyone can join. Anyone, just come on over. It's all fun. It's all fun here. She is saying the quiet part out loud. Because this is really what they want. Listen to what she said here about the politicians being compared to the people in their state. Listen to this. West Virginia is going to look very different from a Democrat in New York and California and Ohio. And to w to get more Democratic senators, um, we're, we're going to need to win states like Pennsylvania. We're going to need to win states like uh, Wisconsin. We're going to need to win states like Ohio. And to win those states, we're going to have to understand that the Democratic candidates are going to be candidates who reflect the values of people in their state and not every ideological special interest group in Washington. And yet, in the That's a lie. If that were true, when you look at a state like West Virginia, that they reflect the people in the state and not the big interest groups in Washington, then why did the Democratic Party advocate for Joe Manchin over Paula Jean Swearingen? Paula Jean Swearingen was not into big money corporate interests. Paula Jean Swearingen grew up there, grew up poor, ran a grassroots campaign she was more reflective of the people in West Virginia than Joe Manchin was. And Joe Manchin is one of the richest senators, by the way. So if that was the case, her name's Liz Smith, if that was the case, Liz, then it would be Paula Jean Swearingen sitting in the Senate instead of Joe Manchin. But that's not the case. It actually isn't about what the people want when it comes to who wins when it comes to the candidates that are heavily promoted, it's not about what the people wants. It's about what the donors want. Now, someone else is going to admit that same statement that I just said to you. Some of you may be familiar with Mr. James Carville. God, he's awful. He's awful. And I understand if you do not want to hear this man's voice, but he is going to admit <clears throat> He's going to admit to what I just told you about what really matters more. Let me show you how quickly they are, the Democratic Party, to sell out, to sell out their, their policies, to sell out their morals, their values, to sell all those things out just to please corporate interests. Listen to this. Now, he had this interview here with Anderson Cooper. Listen to what he says here about this thing that some groups that support Democrats have done, which is bought advertising, which may boost far right candidates against more moderate Republicans, the idea that fringe candidates would be easier to defeat in a general election because they would turn off so many independents and others. Uh, Congressman Adam Kinzinger called Democratic groups helping to promote election deniers disgusting. He warned they were underestimating the threat to democracy in the U.S. I just want to play what he said and then and ask you to, to respond. Sure. While I think a certain number of Democrats truly understand that democracy is threatened, don't come to me after having spent money supporting an election denier in a primary and then come to me and say, You're, where are all the good Republicans? You're worried about democracy. I truly believe that all these issues we argue about, they matter, but the thing that matters the most right now is the threat to our democracy. It's the thing our kids will judge us by, and when we're sitting here playing D triple C, you know, DNC politics, let's promote the, the crazy, and then that person wins, you don't understand the real threat. I'm sorry, you don't understand the threat to democracy. What <laughs> do you think of this, this strategy that some are doing? Well, I, look, this is going on forever. So he's talking about the strategy of Democrat politicians actually donating or Democratic DNC donating money to Republican candidates. That's what they're talking about. And yes, that's happening. Listen to what he says here. 
This is eye opening. Mark Rush Limbaugh told his people to vote and cross over in Democratic primaries. I've seen this happen any number of times. And sometimes, it, it, most of the times, it's ineffective. It doesn't work. But if I'm running a campaign, I'm going to do whatever I think is in the best interest of that candidate. If that's what they hired me to do. I would, without hesitation, equivocation, or reservation, if I thought it would help my candidate, if I promoted a candidate on the Republican side, I'd do it. I wouldn't have one iota of moral qualm about it. Now, I hope everybody heard that. Let's hear it again for the people in the back. Because he's revealing himself here. Listen to what he's saying. A certain number of Democrats truly understand that democracy is threatened. Don't come to me after having spent money supporting an election denier in a primary and then come to me and say, You're, where are all the good Republicans? You're worried about democracy. I truly believe that all these issues we argue about, they matter. But the thing that matters the most right now is the threat to our democracy. It's the thing our kids will judge us by. And when we're sitting here playing D triple C, you know, do you guys think your kids will judge you by our democracy or will they judge judge you by, I don't know, their economic situation? If you're poor, do you think that your kids are going to judge you by our democracy or the fact that they may not be able to pay for lunch? The fact that they're telling us that the democracy is the most important issue when we are in a recession and we're experiencing high inflation, they're letting you know that that, that don't matter. The most important thing to them is democracy so that they can keep winning. That's what that's about. DNC politics, let's promote the, the crazy and then that person wins. You don't understand the real threat. I'm sorry, you don't understand the threat to democracy. What do wow. you think of this, this strategy that some are doing? Well, Here it is. I, look, this is going on forever. Our, Rush Limbaugh told his people to vote and cross over in Democratic primaries. I've seen. Why is he taking advice from Rush Limbaugh? Rush Limbaugh told his people to vote, cross over in different primaries. Why is he taking advice from racist Rush Limbaugh? Is that what we're doing now? Anderson Cooper didn't push back on that. This is CNN, right? Do I have glasses? No. Eh. Let me squint. It's CNN. Right? Why is he taking advice from Rush Limbaugh? This happened any number of times. And sometimes, it, it, most of the times, it's ineffective. It doesn't work. But if I'm running a campaign, I'm going to do whatever I think is in the best interest of that candidate. If that's what they hired me to do. I would, without hesitation, equivocation, or reservation, if I thought it would help my candidate, if I promoted a candidate on the Republican side, I'd do it. I wouldn't have one iota of moral qualm about it. Now, he would do it, whatever they ask him to do, and he wouldn't have any moral qualm about it. See how quickly the morals and the values just go out the window? Just like that. You see, they're on the same team. Democrats and Republicans are on the same team. If you go today and you tell them, you tell the Democratic Party, you tell Democrat candidates or Democrat politicians and you let them know, listen, uh, I've decided that I'm going to vote for your opponent, the Republican opponent. What are they going to do? They'll call you a traitor. They'll be like Kamala Harris and say, don't start talking like a Republican, but it's okay for them to do it. It's okay for them to make these deals behind closed doors. It's okay for them to endorse and donate to Republican candidates. But if you did it, you're the problem. Goodbye, James. This is terrible. This is, I, I can't, I, I wish I was making this up, but I can't. It's like it's gotten to the point where they really are saying the quiet part out loud. And I really hope more people are picking up on these conversations. I'm going to go to some of the comments here. 
Astro says a white Obama with CIA history. <laughs> Leroy says, did the shadow app conduct that poll for Pete? Remember that in Iowa, guys? JB says they're pushing Mayor Pete in the polls from those states because they want Pete to be the new manager of the U.S. for the wealthy elites. That's right. JB also says, I couldn't even name a city in New Hampshire if I tried. <laughs> Shout out to Jay, the informant. Status Coup has done great reporting on Trash Pete. Thank you so much for the super chat. <laughs> Terry says, fact savvy, Pete don't give a shit about blacks. Nope, sure don't. Astro says, I think the black cop was the chief of police. Also, as a hooser, let me say, there is still a lot of under the radar racism here. Old home of the Klan. Interesting. Joe says Liz Warren endorsed Manchin during his last campaign. She sure did. Now, if Elizabeth Warren is progressive like she says she is, why didn't she endorse Paula Jean Swearingen? All these people are frauds. Yasmin says confirmed. Carville holds seances to talk to Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, Andrew. I think it's safe to assume Carville would support Trump if Bernie somehow won the nomination. I think at least 75% of the DNC would follow suit. And I agree with you, Andrew. I agree with you. And that right there will let you know that it's not about policy for them. It's about protecting capitalism. I'll go ahead and take that comment on Rockfin. Thanks for the tip on Rockfin, Roger. I asked you all to not see the Ford party as a glass half empty, but half full. If he wants to come in and do ultra MACA, the C means centrist and split the vote blue, no matter who vote, allow the greens to squeeze through. I say, go on with your bad self. Yang split that vote, baby. Sab, you know, black people don't like the cold. You're not going to find us in New Hampshire, Vermont, or Maine. <laughs> Governor Lepage said it himself about Maine being a white state. Thank you for this tip on Rockfin as well. You know, Miki Lookalike says Dems. <laughs> oh, geez. No, Miki Lookalike says Dems in NYC ain't going to look like Dems in Wisconsin or Dems in Ohio. You know where Dems, if they wanted to, to get on board for something universal, empowering workers in the workplace via worker co-ops and minimum wage hikes that put us eight feet above H2O, not head barely above H2O. National Infrastructure Bank, Medicare for All, and Congress, you can mint platinum coins to pay for tangibles. Get to minting. Thank you so much for that, Roger. <laughs> 